Good morning and welcome to day five, our last day of the challenge. And today we're going to talk about lifestyle and self-care practices. The Today's email was a little bit longer than they have been because it was the last one and arguably one of the most important ones, even though every day was very important and we got a lot of um, benefits from each practice every day. This is one that's going to have impact in a lot of different areas. So not only your anxiety, but your overall health and well-being and happiness, mental state, all of it. And um, we, So I'm going to try to make today's video a little bit shorter than they have been. But if you'll notice a lot of overlap in all of the days, we've tr covered different things on each day, but they all build on top of one another, right? And that's what we're trying to do is that's how things are created and changed and done and succeeded at is not overnight not all at once but a little by little brick by brick piece by piece and um, taking care of yourself is something that is also done little by little piece by piece right you, you do X amount of things a day, maybe different things a day, but they all lead to the same um, end goal, which is taking care of yourself, being healthier, and having less anxiety, right? My cat sticks in a knock over my video, so if that happens, just hang with me. Um, so, I recommend, okay, where do I start with this? Food triggers. There's a lot of food triggers for anxiety. So, okay, being proactive and taking care of yourself is really beneficial to lowering your anxiety because there are a lot of environmental and lifestyle triggers to anxiety. So if you're more prone to anxiety, then you're really want to you're really going to want to be proactive in. Um, not necessarily keeping yourself away from these triggers because we can't live our, live our lives in a bubble, but um, minimizing triggers and yeah, that's really it. Minimizing triggers is our goal. So there's a lot of foods that trigger anxiety, like caffeine, sugar, processed foods, vata foods, which are uh, dry and brittle mostly processed. I recommend creating a food journal because you really don't know what's causing your specific anxiety until you start mapping things out and seeing what, seeing what um, the patterns show. So I have a food journal available uh, that helps you figure out your food triggers and whatnot on not only a physical aspect but a spiritual and mindful aspect as well um i probably linked to it in the email i think in case you want to do that but uh you can just as easily keep a notebook and write down you know today i ate this and this is how i felt um my anxiety level today on a scale from one to ten was a five you know whatever is true for you and uh that'll help you kind of weed out your trouble foods, your, your trouble problems, and see if you can find alternatives for that, because it's not only the the sugar, the caffeine, the, the upper foods like that. Dairy can have an effect on anxiety, as well as gluten, as well as anything out there that has any kind of food sensitivities, sensitivities tied to it can cause sugar. fruits natural sugars can cause it. it it really it really depends on you your body makeup your digestive tract there is a thousand different factors that can tie into which what exactly is causing your food triggers um, so the only way that you can figure that out is by doing your own research on your own body and a lot of this, a lot of the things I teach are just doing your own research on your own body, okay? And that takes no tools. It, it just meditation. Sit there and think about yourself and in different aspects. So, like, um, I've noticed that when I eat this, like, okay, I'll give you my own examples. When I eat bread, like gluten and stuff, all, all, it's not all bread. 
no, for some reason. I don't know. Um, but I assume it's gluten. You know, I haven't been scientifically, medically tested or anything like that. I've just noticed that when I eat in certain breads, um, it gives me a certain type of indigestion that makes my chest hurt, which ramps my anxiety up because I have anxiety around my health. Okay? And um, so I try to avoid bread to the best of my abilities because it causes that which causes anxiety. And uh, so yours may look similar or they may look completely different. Um, when I drink one cup of coffee, I'm okay, but if I drink a cup and a half of, co of coffee, then I get the jitters, which causes anxiety. Or, um, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. It, it's whatever causes your anxiety is gonna be completely different and unique to what causes my anxiety. Um, body activating practices such as dry brushing or lotioning yourself, massaging, um, that's going to lower your anxiety as well because it's getting you out of your mind and into your body. And you can do that. I've got a whole post on that. I'm not going to reiterate here because we're trying to make the video a little bit shorter today. Creating space, uh, creating the ambience of your spaces like um, salt lamps and candles, turning your diffuser on, and I have a whole list of um, essential oils on the website. I believe it's under the ultimate guide to dealing with anxiety or something like that. You can do like a, a search for it and it'll come up. And I've got a whole list of essential oils that specifically help with anxiety so you can take an extra minute. That's how long it takes me to set up my diffuser. A minute. And um, less than that sometimes because I like the ones that cut off after an hour. So I can turn it on, enjoy it for an hour, and then if I get up and walk away it's not running with nobody sitting there benefiting from it. It's not wasteful. And when I come sit back down at my desk or wherever I'm at because I have one in almost every room, um, I can just turn it back on and it, I can just hit the button and it's already done. And it just starts going again so that's super helpful um, so salt lamps don't only help with ambience which is creating an atmosphere of peaceful relaxation but they also um, charge negative ions I think is the right it's something like that which um, affects our moods and uh, how we deal with things and even things like asthma and I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, I don't know, um, medical, some medical things like breathing and I don't know, like stuff. I'm not a salt, salt lamp expert, I just know that they're good and so I've got a ton and I love them because of, you know, the atmosphere that they put off in me anyway. Anyway, um, creating the type of space that you want also is things like having a clean area and I don't mean you know like there can't be st stuff here and there you know like I have kids there's always stuff places but I also explore minimalism which is a uh, you know a lifestyle of less and when you have less there's less to clean also and things um, it's a it's a pro, it's a practice of creating space also so getting rid of the extra getting rid of the junk you'd be amazed at how much anxiety and stress are tied to these physical objects that you haven't even touched in a year laying in the corner of your house okay if you get rid of them and now that's a clean corner then you release anxiety from yourself out and like disperse it so that you don't have to carry it around anymore. You would be amazed, I promise you. Start getting rid of some of the junk that you haven't you haven't touched in like a year or two and you'll just start feeling the weights off your shoulders. So that's a really good thing to check out. I have a, a course on minimalism on the website that's on the bottom of most blog posts. So it's called Mindful Minimalist. You can easily find it. Um, if you're interested, let me know wherever you're seeing this at and I can get you a link to it also. But um, our lifestyle is the most important thing that we can do in anything 
that we're trying to do, right? Anything we're trying to accomplish, our lifestyle, it's is built piece by piece, okay? Everything you're trying to accomplish in life is created in your lifestyle, in the the 30 second things you do every day and in the two minute things that you do every day. And when you're doing specific things every day to lower your anxiety or to, you know, whatever you're trying to accomplish, then that builds up and it grows momentum and helps you to create um, the outcomes that you're trying to create. So that's really all I have to do for today because I went in so much detail in the email on this subject. So make sure you read the email and do the prompts and tell us below what you're um, dedicating a practice to, a lifestyle practice to, of prevention or whatever, or what, which area you're going to try to focus on. Because don't try to do it all at once, y'all. Do not try to do everything today, do everything tomorrow, do everything overnight. It's going to be extra overwhelming and you're going to stall out. And if you're anything like me, when you get overwhelming, you shut down and you don't do anything. And that's not what we want. We want to do things. So, we don't want to shut down. We want to progress. So do one thing today and see if you can get that to become a habit to where you're not thinking about it anymore. And then add one more thing. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, however long it takes you to create the habit of this one thing. Then add another. And then when that becomes a habit, add another. Like, we want slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race like they've been telling us our whole lives, right? One thing at a time, always, always one thing at a time to focus on. Two tops. Two tops. Don't get overly excited and charge headfirst into 50 different things in a completely different lifestyle because it's unsustainable and it's a recipe for failure. So, um, that's all I have today. Read the email. If you um, aren't caught up with the other days, go catch up with those. Do the prompts. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can catch the future challenges and extra in-between challenge videos and whatnot I do because I upload pretty regularly. Um, make sure you're in the Facebook group if you're not. The link is below in the description. Uh, follow me at Earth and Water at earth and underscore water across all platforms um and i guess that's all i can tell you to do just keep in touch and if you had if you benefited from this challenge in any way please invite your friends and family who also struggle well, invite everybody to the facebook group because honestly i don't know anybody who doesn't in some form or way struggle with anxiety or overwhelm or fears in some way, whether they know it or not, whether they realize it or not. So basically everybody can benefit from some of the, from all of these practices that we do. And I don't want people to be living with this like I lived with it for so long. So anyway, um, I'm gonna stop rambling, stop talking, stop chatting, and I'll see you in the Facebook group and around and comment and ask me questions and all that good stuff.